Good morning and welcome to Off the Press, the program where we'll take a look at the national dailies and try to dissect it as much as we can make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning is a public affairs analyst, Moses Naikwe. Thanks for having me. Welcome. And of course, a legal practitioner and public affairs analyst, also Ifi Oji. Welcome. Thank you, Amaka. And good to see you both on this Friday morning. So we have a couple of papers this morning, but we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. It would be displayed uh, on your screen. So it says... Uh, Shareholders fume over difficulties to claim 126 billion naira dividends on page 27, already displayed there on your screen. And uh, IPPIS controversy, uh, federal government hits ASO, says no agency must oppose payment system. That story is on page two, and beneath it, you can't be staff members in all varsities, minister tells lecturers, and that's on page two. Uh, we have picture story, and that's uh, from uh, the fires rage, uh, raging, uh, raving California at the moment. Uh, we have picture stories to that effect. And we have at the top, there seem to be a lot of stories here on the Punch newspaper. Um, federal government plans 10, 100 and rather 10 trillion naira infrastructure bond as a pension fund. That's on page 11. You would see it after the display of the California fires there on your screen. Uh, you will get to see it. NJC recommends four new Supreme Court justices and eight others. That's on page 11. And then the minimum wage. NLC releases state negotiation guidelines next week on page 21 um, there. Senators mount pressure on MDAs for job slots on page 42 of the Punch newspaper. Social media regulation not best option, according to the Vice President Toshiba John. That story is on page 11. And then again, lightning kills eight cows in Undo on page 4. Uh, tension rises in Zaria over alleged ban on beer on page 41. And police rescue 108 from Quara torture chamber. That's on page 41. Or your assembly passes anti open grazing bill on page 20. And pastors come under fire for alleged stage managed miracles on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. Now, MTN plans stakeholders talk over USSD dispute on page 30. Hmm. If you can see you nodding. Yes, I mean, I. So we'll begin from that story? Yes, let's, let's look at the USSD charges. Mm -hmm. These are the structured uh, uh, data charges that um, they've been proposing. Um, I think that. One of the main issues, or one of the main reasons why it's become so topical, is the fact that everyone now understands the importance of penetration, data mm -hmm. penetration in, in, in uh, Nigeria, and how it can affect uh, development, economic development. And we know that most, most people that are in within, within the uh, rural areas in Nigeria can't actually afford data the mm -hmm. same way that you and I or p other people would use it. So the next bridge, the way to bridge in terms of technology and in terms of data, is the USSD. I don't know if many of us know, each time we're trying to um, find out how much money we have, our balance, hmm. we use a text, and that text uh, technology is basically what we can actually, it's basically a, a more sort of shrunken form of uh, 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 um, uh, 4G data. Mm -hmm. So I think for them to want to actually incur, um, or put on charges or penalize us for USSD charges is not fair. I mean, through obviously the telcos is not fair because that is our only hope in terms of bridging ourselves to the next phase of technology mm. for Nigerians. And hopefully that will also encourage us to have economic growth. Okay, so it's a good thing that they're having that talks. Let's see how that is resolved. Yesterday we talked about the ASU um, and the federal government hits ASU, says no agency must oppose payment system. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, I think, um, I don't know the reason why ASO is um, opposing this um, integrated uh, payment system, but I think um, they said that it's going to impede on their autonomy, you know. But I think if we really want to get accountability and to check, you know, ghost workers and all, from all kinds of corruption, I think um, they should be, they should allow this system to, to come and then stay in a, um, in their payment system. So this opposition to this system, I don't understand the rationale behind it. Well, we'll watch and see. Uh, ASU uh, and the federal government will see what happens in that battle. Yes, yet another uh, house is, recover, is seen in Quara. Police rescue 108 from Quara torture chamber. Apparently, it looks like 
these houses, these places of torture have been in existence, but one story seemed to have led to another, as we have seen. Okay, yeah, um, my concern is not just rescuing these people. My concern is persecution, uh, the, the trial of the people that run these houses. Why do we even have this uh, kind of houses in the first place? It's it's a failure of the society, and it's, if you look, if you really want to look into it, it's it has religious connotations, and I don't want to mention any religious any religion here, so that I don't sound biased. But if you really look at it, we need to nip this in the board mm -hmm. by making sure that the people that run these houses are tried and are brought to book so that others will will and so that it will serve as a deterrent to others who want to go into this. It's not just enough to rescue these people and then you leave the people that are perpetuating this act. They will go again and, and then continue. continue. Mm -hmm. You know that's the, the the problem I have. We we like to treat the symptoms rather than to go to the to the root cause of um, of the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I agree with what he's saying as well, but also, just not to take us off completely directly, but in a segue, I was also looking at uh, the, I think, federal government, mm -hmm. 10 trillion mm, for yeah. infrastructure. I know we've spoken about this. Uh, bond. Yeah, yeah, we've spoken about this a million times, but just to just uh, make a quick uh, comment there. I, I actually agree with them for the first time. I mm. think that infrastructure uh, bond is the best way to bridge the government uh, government efforts and a private sector as well, even if it's not formally. Mm -hmm. So I know, for example, they're, they're saying they're eyeing the, uh, they're the, eyeing the uh, pension, pension fund. fund. Yes, I, I agree, because pension funds, 85% of uh, the um, monies from pension fund are actually invested in treasury, mm -hmm. actually put in treasury bills. bills. Yeah, so I mean, that's another way of, and it, because it's backed, those treasury bills are backed by the government. That is why that is what gives the comfort and security that most Nigerians would require mm -hmm. if they're going to invest in infrastructure in the country. Mm. All right. So this uh, this story we read this morning on social media. The vice president talking about the social media and asking that you know we be careful in the use of social media. What are your thoughts on that, really? Uh, anybody that is scared of the social media, it's 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 a, it's a symptom or a symptomatic of 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 tyranny. Not scared of the social media. He's talking about regulation. Be yeah, because that's what I'm saying now. Anybody that has issues with the social media is because it is the easiest way of disseminating information other than the normal, you know, media houses. You know, so the social media has been a tool that has helped people to disseminate information that the normal media houses wouldn't have disseminated because of the regulation that they, they have to go through. So any attempt by the government to, to regulate the social media is symptomatic. Of, Just to be clear, he is not saying That's that what I'm saying. Regulated. What he's saying is OK. Okay. Okay. So, so what, what I also say, Justin, mm, to add to what mm, you're saying, mm, basically, is that yes, I agree with mm, uh, Shibajo. He makes yeah. a very good point. Mm. Ultimately, we should we should take the um, social media out of the hands of regulator. Yeah. And and because and and I think, but but what he is cautioning about, which I think you are trying to yeah. uh, point out, was we should be very careful in terms of how information, especially with hot button topics such mm. as religion and politics, especially if they are false information are disseminated. So I mean, a classic example was yesterday, the whole of yesterday, uh, Mark Zuckerberg was under fire from Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Um, mm -hmm. He was, he thought he was going, he was more or less ambushed. He thought he was going into to, uh, to, to have a hearing uh, um, uh, regarding the, I think the currency, the Facebook yeah. currency Libra. But as, as soon as he got there, there was, was a so huge nervous. deluge in terms of trying to sort of pin him down and give some accountability from Facebook. I know we talked about, I don't know if we've talked about it um, yet, but during the um, Cambridge Analytica yeah. issue. So they do not, they, 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 they they're holding on to it like, like a dog is holding on to a bone. This issue that was obviously a pre-election pre issue, they've still brought it back to the fore because it's such an important issue. Mm. You cannot disseminate information that does not have any backing or basis, basis. in truth. Yeah. So that is what I think uh, Oshiba Joy is trying to mm. point out. But in terms of trying to take it largely out of the hands of regulations, I, I agree with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Completely so. All right. In the interest of time, we'll move uh, to another paper, but just very quickly, behind the Punch newspaper, it's a column there by Ayo, Vision 2020, momentum, a mentor of a field project. 
uh, please grab a copy and find out what that is about. Uh, we'll go to the Vanguard newspaper here now, and it says, Killer of Reverend Father, brother nabbed four years after in Undo, and that's on page seven. Um, Buhari applauds as Nigeria moves up 15 places in 2020 <laughs> ranking. Some <laughs> bit of good news there. On page 19, yes. and uh, abductors of high fe federal high court judges insist on 50 million naira ransom. Uh, that's on page 11 of the Vanguard newspaper. And of course, the big story, FD Asu lock horns over government payroll system. It will be displayed on your screen. Asu resistance misplaced, says uh, finance minister. And Asu fires back, says it's illegal against varsity autonomy. Now, vows resistance restates its breach of 1992 agreement. That story, you can find it on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper. Now, Nigeria's uh, ties with Russia should assist in tackling poverty, according to our president, that's on page 41. And sex for Max, Kaduna Varsity suspends yet another lecturer, and that's on page 8. Um, video uh, shown in court portrays how gang murdered, buried seven DSS operatives in Lagos. Very chilling story there on page 7 of the Vanguard newspaper, and that's what we have this morning. Where do we begin? Uh, I saw you, Ify. Start with what is in your mind. I, know I like story. good news. I, I know. know they always say no news or good. Um, good bad, news is not news. Bad news uh, is no. Yeah, self. no news is good news. Mm -hmm. But but I actually am very very positive about the Nigeria's 15. future. Mm -hmm. The ranking is a very important ranking because it actually informs typical investors, especially foreign investors, mm -hmm. on how to make their moves for the next year. So obviously it's coming at a time just before the uh, dawn of 2020, in time for them to make those those key decisions in terms of where they're going to invest their money. Mm -hmm. So I was privileged enough to attend uh, the town hall organized by this uh, uh, um, forum where they brought together this, uh, I think it was Dr. Jumoke uh, Oduwale. Mm. She's, the, she's the, the, the head of uh, this agency that they put together for Buhari's team. And they put together the immigration, um, Nigerian Immigration Service. They brought together SON, Standards Organization of Nigeria. Mm. They brought together CAC, every agency that was that's required in terms of that's critical in making decisions for uh, business uh, business decisions I guess in Nigeria were brought together in one room and we, they were basically called to task in terms of how to make this thing possible mm -hmm. and I think that uh, the work over the three years has paid off. This is the result. Yes. 15 points uh, up it's not it's, a bad idea. It's at very all. good. Do you have Well I just want to highlight the hypocrisy of this government. Also. In as much as I'm happy that we have moved 15 points, 15 places, when this same organization released the previous ranking, this Buhari government almost buried this organization. So now that they have released a positive assessment or a positive report on Nigeria, they are celebrating this same organization. I mean, I'm I, good I, I, news. No, 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 what I'm saying yeah. is this. No, what's it, you make your point exactly. My point is this. Mm -hmm. It is not when the news favors you that you celebrate, that you, you accept it and celebrate it. Is that what it seems to you? you no, 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 no. Well, I can give you, you the know, you, you are in the media. You, no, no, you are in the media. You know, no, no, no. I can give you No, no, we were, before the election, 2018, when they released, the no, no, excuse, no yeah. 2018, when they released their report, before the elections, mm -hmm. we know, we know the attack that this report got. You understand me? So now they are celebrating this same organization for releasing a paper Because they no. made the positive yeah. change. You're not getting what Leadership I'm saying. Leadership was no, changed. No. Yeah, hold on. Changed. No, what I'm saying is this. No, no, what? no, no, you're not getting me. I am, I am happy we moved forward. Mm -hmm. But I am saying when we have a, 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 a non-favorable report, what we should do is we should accept it and make constructive assessment and of so why which they did. Which they did, no, and then they they have this result. About the initial attack on the reputation of the people that released this <laughs> yes, report. Yes, so what they, they did, I'm to task, and then they to task. No, no, you're not they getting, I am not the saying, people. they, I am they not saying the they didn't change it, but what I'm saying is that their attitude towards the initial report, that's what I'm saying. But the attitude was backed by action, that's the most important. No, no, and now we can see the results. No, no, I'm not talking about results. No, you put like, you know, what I'm saying is that. So I make your point clearly. My point is this. 
Don't, it is not only when the result, the, the, the report favors you that you praise the, the people that released the so report. So in the past, they were taxed and then they delivered the result. There's I am no not error. saying they didn't deliver the result. What I'm saying is that if they we'll criticize, no, 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 no. We, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't celebrate <laughs> it when it is only positive and then we criticize the people that released it. So what we are saying, what, when so it is negative, we job. take it in oh, good faith and Are you saying it. that the actual ranking uh, organization is who Buhari was criticizing? It, Yes, now. Okay, I get what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. The say, people that yeah. the, the, the actual ranking organization, mm -hmm. Buari criticized them in 2018. Buari has been sure criticizing them. What did you say? Ah, they said that this, they are Nigerian. We shall it. move on. But they said <laughs> the result is not fair to, on the Nigerian government that they are making all the necessary um, efforts. Well, we shall proceed. No, we uh, there is mm -hmm. something here. That's okay. what I'm saying. Sorry. All right. We shouldn't <laughs> pick and choose. We shouldn't uh, well, we and shall choose. pick and choose. Right, um, right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Where when it is, go to. Yes, when right. it is favorable, hallelujah. When it is not favorable, we work harder. Okay. And we accept it in good faith. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Mm. So we get your point. Yes. Just well, at well, the tail end. Let's, let's not be so losers is what he's trying to say. Okay, so the, the abductors of the Federal High Court uh, judge is still insisting on 50 million ransom. This is scary, isn't it, to see where we are in terms of security? You know, the last time I came here, he said I should, uh, I wanted to say my mind. Uh, you know, I've told you that so this security... So long as your, your mind is backed by facts and not, <laughs> That's what I say. You know, this not security, sentimental. Not sentiment. I'm a, very, I'm a realist. These security issues will persist as long as the president refuses to act by reshuffling the security chiefs. They have been redundant. They have they are they are out of ideas. It's so shameful that a high a federal high court judge will be adopted. That means we are nobody safe in this country. The ordinary man. You know, I, I am tired of commenting on security issues. Maybe my sister can do no, that. No, but he's yeah. right. I mean it's insidious and it's an insidious part of our system. In yeah. fact, it's almost at the point where it's now part of our culture. Mm. Just because we know that we cannot travel to our villages or the, you know at certain points at certain points in the calendar, mm -hmm. because those are high kidnapper yeah. periods. Mm -hmm. That's that's does, if that doesn't scare anybody, it scares me. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are, what what are we going to say about our children, our grandchildren? Mm -hmm. they will, it is part of our culture at this point. So I, I actually agree with him on that respect. Mm. That's quite unfortunate, anyways. And kill off Reverend Father uh, Brother Napped five years after Inundo. So, does that mean that uh, our investigation takes almost forever and a day? <laughs> or well, work is ongoing? Well, well, let's thank God that they have been nabbed, you know. But, I, you know, as long as we, we in this country, we, we see as long as we don't get the, the issue of data correctly in this country, investigation was, will, will take longer. You understand me? You'll be surprised that majority of the people in Nigeria don't have a verifiable data. So how can you investigate? The people, when you see foreign uh, countries, how they come so fast on investigation and conclude I'm cases, thorough. Thorough, it's because they have access to data. Everybody is captured in their, in their system. Yeah. So it makes it um, very easy. And sorry, before you drop that paper, we rush, uh, our ties with Russia will lead us out of poverty. Um, Russia, well, that's... That is speculative because Russia itself, economic, economically, they are not doing so well. The economy is not buoyant, so I don't see how that um, is going to is going to work out. Your opinion, I guess. No, no, it's, 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 it's <laughs> we, had that, we had that these conversation yesterday. These anyway. are facts. Mm. Uh, we'll move to thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we we'll move to this day now, and it says Buhari Hills, Nigeria's 15 places movement in World Bank's. Uh, EODB, even if you disagree, but yes, and promises more impactful reforms. Businesses demand cost reduction. That's mm. on the front uh, page there, uh, but continued on page five. CBN bars individuals and domestic firms, uh, firms rather from Omo auction on page eight of the newspaper there. And Lekki Deep Sea Port as game changer for Nigeria. River Port faces shutdown. Closure could lead to congestion of Apapa ports. That story is displayed there. You can see it's on the front page. But it's continued also on page eight of the same newspaper. Now Zenith leads as four banks record 431 billion naira profit in nine months. You can see the full story there. And then we have a picture story just down of uh, uh, the vice president and the representative from uh, UA, uh, UAE. Yeah, uh, when they had the conversation on a religious dialogue yesterday in Abuja. INEC seeks financial autonomy for states' electoral commissions. That's on page five. If you, I see you nodding at one of the stories. 
I'm um, just looking at um, the Zenith Bank and others that lead, yeah. So I, I know we, ha we have never really spoken about it, but I'm just putting it in the back of uh, the lending ratio issues yeah. that CBN is having with a few of the banks at mm -hmm. the moment. So it's just a question of them having to uh, restructure. For those of the banks that are not part of this ranking and haven't seen a, um, record uh, growth, yeah. just a question of them restructuring and making sure that those lending ratios are within the uh, required guidelines mm -hmm. and making sure that if they have res um, excess reserves, that these reserves are put into funds where they are actually uh, investing in creatives and lending money mm -hmm. to the creative industry as, as has been suggested by CBN. Mm -hmm. So yeah. some synergy there. Yeah, yeah, just to so quickly add to those lending ratios will, you know, they, there are some technicalities involved in, in, in adjusting those lending ratios. As long as our infrastructure mm -hmm. is not improved, those lending ratios in the short term will not improve. And um, quickly, mm -hmm. INEC is no, um, talking about financial, um, financial autonomy, autonomy states, electoral commission. to make them more independent. It's, mm -hmm. it's hypocritical because INEC itself is not independent. We have seen it over time that it is called an independent electoral commission. Is that, that is not a enough? cliche. That's a cliche. So why they, did you they, say no, that? no. We, over time, based on their performance and their pedigree and their antecedents, we have been Nigerians don't. No, my question is why did you say the states? Uh, no, I'm talking about INEC advising somebody. Before you remove the, the speck in my eyes, you have to take away the log in your own eyes. It's a good advice, but I'm saying that INEC does not have the moral uh, uh, justification, you know, to try to solve someone's problem when he has not solved his own um, problem. That's uh, just what um, I'm saying. I won't go into the moral, mm. <laughs> the moral <laughs> part of this discussion. I'll just go on mm. basically mm. why, from a um, theoretical point of view, why it's important to have autonomy. Mm -hmm. So basically, for each of these states, right, they have independent, they have governors, and they have obviously legislative arms that are independent as well. So it makes sense for them to have autonomy in terms of deciding how they're going to conduct their elections mm -hmm. for these, for all these different um, um, gov um, government positions. So um, why why it becomes important is when you're looking at uh, if if uh, if these decisions are not according to party lines. Mm -hmm. For example, you may have in Kora State or Kogi State. A different party that is a ruling party within the legislative or maybe even within the uh, executive, and then, for example, the presidency has a completely different party that is uh, is in is in uh, control. So, if you don't have that autonomy, mm -hmm. you tend to find that uh, the the ruling um, the ruling party within the state government may, may sometimes be made penalized, the opportunities for them to be penalized, or, or, or whatever, what have you, just mm -hmm. because they don't tow the party line of the presidency yeah. or, the, or the ruling party. Okay, so we, I, I took that paper away because we need to hurry up now in the interest of time. We are on the nation. And NJC tips four as uh, Supreme Court justices on page seven, eight judges for probe. Still on page uh, uh, page seven of the nation newspaper, eight cows struck dead on Ondo Mountain. On page 47, 41, councils bound cow meat. Mm. That's on page forty one of the nation newspaper. Lawyers field uh, stall. Lawyers field stalls. Naira Mali's case. Musician gets December 12th date. Uh, that's on page six. By also and Kogi uh, elections. Defectors are uh, ADC members, says Dixon. APC to government. Withhold by SS 7 billion Naira VAT refund. 3 million man march held for Bello. Uh, this and more you will find on pages 10. Now, NLC wants state council against rushing into the new minimum wage. Uh, that story is on the front page. You will see it continued on page 8. Banks and telcos feud over USSD charges deepens. Still on the front page, but continued on page 8. Kidnap of judge, a violation of Temple of Justice. That's according to the MBA. Lawyers slam federal government over insecurity is on the front page, but it's continued on uh, page 8. And then you can see displayed there pictures from Quara. And this is 108 persons rescued from illegal Quara Rehab Center. Uh, these are more you can find on the pages of uh, the Nation newspaper. Lagos begins clamp down on traffic offenders and street traders, and that's on page seven. We're going to take just one story here. Okay. Um... The, the VAT. The VAT. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know see, this is hypocrisy. The president we went have to... have used this word for the fourth time. Yes, this is hypocrisy. The president said um, uh, Kogi State should be... They should, be, they should refund $10 billion or so to Kogi State government mm. for federal projects. Mm. Even after he said that the federal government will no longer refund, you know. And now, APC is crying foul that the federal government should withhold $7 billion Nara VAT going to Bayasa State you know, because they, they perceive that it's going to be used for the election. 
for goodness sake. Is this not hypocrisy? I wouldn't know. Okay, uh, <laughs> I want to say thank you very much uh, thank for coming. So if you're thank you, and uh, Moses and Ike, very yes. controversial. Uh, it's good to have it's you good here. To be and uh, this is where we'll call it a wrap today. We will continue this next week from Monday to Friday of the press, where we tell you about the headlines and make sense of it. And I am Amaka Ukoe, and here on Plus TV Africa, saying have a good day.